Kellogg's place. Let's go. Look what Hank's got underlined here. They have sown the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. Doesn't seem like a fit epitaph for old Hank. Yeah, but it's a fit one for the men who killed him. Looks at these tracks, it seems about eight riders. Same as last time. Looks like they took the horses too, same as the last time. Well, let's go see the sheriff, tell him they've hit another ranch. Won't be needing us now. No, Billy and I may ride out later on, look around. If we find out anything, we'll let you know. Now that goes for the rest of you fellas. Thanks a lot for trying. How about you buying me a beer, maybe? Oh, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Well, you think you could brew me a pot of coffee? Yes, sir. Harry Bodine.
friendly faces. Harry, how are you? Nicholas, how are you? About time you paid us a visit. Ah, oh, Keith, I'm glad to see you. I didn't think you even missed me. Sure, we missed you. Well, now, you're quite a legend around these parts, Harry. We don't get sheriffs like you anymore. They see you around here, they'll have to put that badge right back on you. Not in that line of work anymore, Heath. <laughs> Folks around here will never believe that. It's true. I just stopped by to visit Emma's grave. Are you uh, staying in town? Not while we have a house, he's not. Wait a minute. I said anything about staying any place. Well, you've just been invited. Well, now, we can get together and talk about old times, Harry, and catch up with each other. Besides, I have it on very good authority we're having chicken and dumplings tonight for dinner. I call that hitting below the belt. <laughs> <laughs> it's settled in. Come on, we'll open right. our eyes, Mother. You sure it's all right with me? Oh, sure, it's a right. pleasure. Come on. I'd like it. Well, this is like old times. I'm sorry Audra and Jared are away. Yes, I am, too. Bet you he'd like something a little stronger than tea, wouldn't you, Harry? Oh, you have a bad memory, Nick. It's honey and lemon. Oh. You have a good memory, Victoria. Thank you. How long has it been? Um, five years. Been a lot of changes. No, not with you, Victoria. You're just as lovely as ever. Thank you. But what would even be nicer to hear is that you've come back to stay. Oh, I'm afraid not. He says he's got business in San Francisco. Oh? Are you in business now? Mm, ranching on a small scale. No more guns, no more troubles. <laughs> the only things I fight nowadays are the drought and the hoof and mouth disease. <laughs> well, now, that's a far cry from the good old days, isn't it, Harry? Remember when we were on the trail of the Picture Rock Gang? Yeah. Well, they were holed up in this little Mexican town, and, well, we wanted to go in and shoot it out with them. But Harry here, he said, no, 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 don't do that. I'll, I'll take care of it. Well, he sure did. Dressed up like a peon and went in all alone. Look, Nick, I think we can skip the heroics of the good old days. By the time it was over, he'd gotten six of them. Four, only four. All right, only four, but you got them four on top of a running horse. <laughs> Harry, couldn't you stay just for a day or two? I do have some things to attend to, Victoria. A lot of people are going to be awfully disappointed, Harry, if you leave again so suddenly. Come on, Harry, a day or two won't matter. We got plenty of room. You make it very difficult to say no. Thank you. Good. Mr. Norris, come on in. Well, what is it, Billy? I sure hate to bust in this way, but there's been some trouble. Four men just shot down the sheriff right out in front of his house. Oh, no. He ain't dead, but he's in an awful bad way, ma'am. Doctor's over at his place now. What about the man who shot him? They got away, but I recognized one of the horses, a paint. Same horse one of them outlaws was riding when we uh, had that little run-in with them last week. Is that you, Mr. Bodine? That's right. <laughs> I'm sure pleased to meet you, sir. My pleasure, son. Well, say, we're, uh, we're getting together a posse to go out in the morning, and uh, I'd sure like to have you riding with us. How about it, Harry? We've been having our share of trouble, and then some. Those gangs have been raiding the outlying ranches and raiding the horses, and well, nobody's been able to stop them. Four dead, seven wounded. We sure could use your experience. I don't suppose anyone here would mind if you took over as temporary sheriff, right, Billy? <laughs> Not one bit. I'm sorry, I'd... I'd like to help, you know that, but it's just, uh, I'm not in the business anymore. I hope you understand. Of course we understand. I'll go back to town with you, Billy. The sheriff will need help. Got to say so. You're looking very lovely this morning. Thank you. It's been a long time since I've had the pleasure of driving a lady to town. Well, I appreciate your coming with me. Will you come in? I don't think so, Victoria. In Fred's condition, maybe one visitor at a time. I'll just uh, walk around town, maybe bunk into an old crony, tell a few lies, and pick you up about half an hour. All right. Uh, give Fred my best regards. I will. Hey. Fred? Oh, where are you? How do you feel? A lot better since you came in. Hey, uh, Billy was here earlier. He said they were riding out this morning. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's learning. He's learning pretty good, but he's, uh, he's awful young. Oh, now, Fred, you are not to worry. The doctor said so. All right, all right. Now, 
He said uh, Harry Bodine came back in town. Yes, he's staying with us just for a day or so. He's moving on? Well, Nick tried to get him to take over for you, but... <laughs> he agree? He disagreed. Yeah. Well, he say uh, what he came back for? Oh, yes, to visit his wife's grave. Why? Hmm. Well, I never much uh, figured him for a sentimental man, but maybe he's changed. Just lost a little blood, that's all. Doc Marar was just here, said he needs uh, rest and quiet. What happened? Well, that gang had a stinger on his tail, and we got a little bit too close. He could have been killed. We all took that chance, Harry, when we rode out of here. All except me. If I'd ridden out with you like you all wanted me to, maybe I could have prevented this. I... I'm sorry, Heath. I'm real sorry. Oh. blame you, Harry. It, it wasn't your fault. I mean, this thing has been going on way before you even came into town. That man accepts the friendship and hospitality of folks. He, he doesn't turn his back when they have troubles. No, no, no. We... We expected too much from you. We had no right to do that. A brother of yours in there could be dead. I didn't have the right to let it almost happen. You still interested in me pinning on a badge? Of course we are. All right, let me borrow that hardware of yours. What? Your gun belt and gun. We have it. Oh, all right. You uh, got any particular affection for that skinny little tree over there? No. no. All right. Now, will you let me uh, borrow a horse? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you. All right. um. for the theatrics, Nick, but I had to be sure. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. Feel like old times? Old times, Billy? Oh, yes. Yes, I guess you could say that. Huh? Same old desk, same old chair, and I <laughs> still got the same old squeak. Yeah, but 
positive and five years of living in between. Five years of living and dying. You know, the last time I went through those doors, I swore I'd never put on one of these again, but somewhere in a man's life, a wheel starts turning and he finds that he's gone full cycle. Uh, Nick was telling me about that shooting stunt you did. I sure wish I'd seen that. Stunt? <laughs> now, that, that wasn't really a stunt, Billy. That was 30 years of experience or two minutes of reassurance to an old eagle who was wondering if he still could really fly. Well, I sure wouldn't say that you'd forgotten how. You wouldn't, huh? <laughs> Good boy. Well, now, suppose you just sat here on our nest and kind of, you know, hold things together. I got a little reconnoitering to do. I'd, I'd sure be proud to ride with you, sir. Oh, there'll be plenty of time for that later on, Billy. Plenty of time, believe me. Oh, Mr. Bodine. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something. Recognize this? Should I? It was yours. Yeah, it seems to me I do remember it. Where'd you get it? Well, I went looking for it, and I found it. You know, you're gonna have to refresh my memory a little better than that, Billy. Oh, it's Nick. He's always telling me stories about the days when you were sheriff. I guess I wasn't much more than about 12 then. Anyhow, he was uh, telling me about the time the Murrieta gang chased you up Bennett Canyon. Yeah, I remember that. Well, he said that by the time the posse got there, all you had left was one revolver and three bullets. You had lost your rifle, your horse, and a considerable amount of blood. <laughs> that Nick. He's a great one for remembering, isn't he? Well, so am I. I finally rode on up there and uh, looked for two days before I found that rifle. <laughs> I think that was the day I decided to become a sheriff. Well, you certainly did a Jim Dandy job of cleaning it up, didn't you? Yep, I sure did. It works pretty good, too. Mm. I made sure of that. I, uh, well, I figured maybe this morning you'd want it back. Do you, Miss Bodine? Billy. You can bet your bottom dollar I wouldn't walk out of that door without this rifle. <laughs> all right, now you sit here and mind the store like you're back, all right? Yes, sir. Billy. Thank you. If you give me enough time, I'll come up with a verse to fit the occasion. <laughs> oh, my agony is. Now, boys, as you all know, we've been doing pretty good lately, but we're gonna do even better. Yeah, I got some really big killings planned for us. Saving the biggest and the best for the last. What about the uh, ever-loving hosts, the Barclays? I said I was saving the biggest and the best for the last, didn't I? Everything's going to go according to plan, according to schedule. Come in. Hey, Hayes. Hello, Harry. Sit down. Pour yourself a drink. Oh, All right. Not while I'm working. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to see you looking better. Well, uh, thank you. You'll be back again in the saddle in no time. It won't be too soon. Old Nick's put all the paperwork on me. Huh. 
I can do all my ranching business on the back of an old envelope. Yeah, looks like you're doing even better than ever, huh? Oh, we can't complain. I'd have to live another lifetime to get up into your class. Oh, maybe not, eh? <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Harry! Victoria! Oh, that looks good. Huh? Oh, well, yes, I must admit it doesn't hang as heavy as I thought it would. Oh, are you dressed to go into town? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I daily visit to Fred. You going into town alone? Well, now, I've been going alone into town for a good many years. Well, now's a little different. Maybe I'd better get one of the hands to ride in with you. No, 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 I think Heath is right, Victoria. Some of those outlaws, they may still be in the area. I'll, uh, I'll ride along in with you. You take care of yourself now, Heath. Thanks, Harry. Yeah. Oh, uh, Heath, that can wait, you know. Well, don't worry, it's gonna. Pick you up in about a half hour or so, all right? The outlaws are after horses, not women. If you don't mind, I'll just uh, kind of keep an eye on you just the same. I don't mind. Trouble, Harry? Mm, no trouble at all. Chester, how'd you like to be so rich that you never have to draw that gun of yours again? You never have to sleep nights in a dirt camp like this, never want for anything again the rest of your life. You're talking about a lot of horses, Harry. <laughs> no, not horses, a woman. One woman. I've been looking for that woman ever since I jumped jail in Sydney. I found it. Spell it out, mate. Mrs. Victoria Barkley. Hey, now, take it easy. Jesse, do you realize that Barkley spread lock, stock, and barrels worth more money than you and me will ever see in our life? And I suppose you've uh, taught the lady into deeding it over to you? Better than that. We are going to take Miss Victoria Barkley. And her sons will sell the ranch, everything on it. Turn every penny over to us to get her back alive. To kidnap the lady? Exactly. We'll have her out of here before they even mess her. Hold her my place in Sonora down across the border. Give them time to sell everything. Turn it into cash. They come down. We make the swap. I don't know, Harry. It's dicey. Huh? You know, risky, mate. No, don't you see? We won't have to change our plans one bit. Now, she goes into town every morning, just like clockwork, doesn't she? Tomorrow, Instead of you leading the boys over to the Gunther Ranch, you will be on the trail waiting for her. You take her, bring her here. What happens if I uh, run into the King's officers on the trail, Harry? Not a chance. Every able-bodied man in town will be on that posse with me. Be only two people on the trail. You and her. In that case, I'll uh, be there, love. Where's my little Rosa? Sleeping. It's too early for that. Make yourself comfortable, Harry. I'll get Silas to make you some tea. All right. Looking for this? Well, that's what I call service. How did it go? Well, we had our usual luck. I uh, thought you went into town, Victoria. I've already been there and back. 
Uh, we were up around the North Road all day. Funny we didn't run into you. Oh, I had to stop by the Simmons place first, so I took the back road. Thank you. She didn't turn up. I know that. She drove home the back way, that's all. We'll do it tomorrow. Same plan. Mr. Bodine? Millie! Having any trouble, sir? <laughs> no, no, no trouble at all. Just having a friendly little argument with an old pal of mine is all. Yes, sir. Yeah, get out of here. Get out of here fast before somebody else gets a look at that pussy horse. And now, can I be sure she'll be there tomorrow? I guarantee it. Because I'll be escorting her personally. All right, Harry. I'm not feeling very well. Oh? Well, maybe you better stay in today. Mind the store, huh? Thank you, sir, but not if I'm needed. No, 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 no. You take care of yourself. We'll manage well, Archer. Yes, sir. Keep your eyes open. If you see anything interesting, fire two shots. That clear? Yeah. All right. Oh! So I thought I'd come by. <laughs> you're getting as bad as my boys. Of course, if you're getting tired of my company. Oh, never. Never, Harry. <laughs> you sure, Billy? Absolutely sure. Yes, sir. It's the same man, all right. He was arguing and talking with Mr. Bodine right outside of the office last night. Get Harry Bodine. Don't tip anything. Just tell him to come here. Tell him I want to talk to him. Well, I... I don't know where to look. I'll try the Barclay Ranch. Yes, sir.
sorry, Victoria. Get down. What is this? Afraid you're gonna be away from your family for a little while. I really am sorry about doing it this way. Well, I guess I'm not really shocked after all. The sheriff said you weren't a sentimental man. Meaning what? Fred said that when your wife was dying, you used to visit a woman in town regularly, but uh, I didn't believe him. Get down. What are you? Chester, you all right? I'll live to make her regret it. Don. Get her up on that horse. Mrs. Barkley will be our permanent guest until you deliver us $250,000 in cash. If you stall, you'll never see her alive again. We'll contact you in 30 days. That can't be Harry. Not even after what Billy's told us. I can hardly believe it myself. Why, Sheriff Bodine was one of the best sheriffs this town ever had. That's right, Billy. That's what makes him so dangerous now. Well, they can't be far. There's bound to be tracks where they got out of the buggy. What are we waiting for? Where do you think you're going? You're in no condition to ride. You try and stop me. All right, come on. Just uh, dodge the fire and tell the boys you're ready to move out. Good morning, Victoria. Rose get you something before we go? Nothing. It's gonna be a long, hard ride. I'll try to make it up to you when we get where we're going. Just where are we going? A little place I have down Sonora Way. What happened, Harry? Hmm? What do you mean? Oh, horse thief, kidnapper. Oh, you mean risking my life as a sheriff all these years for a plate of beans and a thank you kindly was more honorable. Wasn't it? How did you get yours, Victoria? Did some man work his life away for you, getting it for you any way he could? Do you really hate us that much? I watched and waited while my wife died because I couldn't earn enough money to pay for an operation. All right, sure. There was another woman, why not? All those years, Emma was sick. She, she was never a, a real wife to me. So you came back here to get even, hmm? Huh? And I'm doing a pretty good job of it, ain't I? Perhaps, if that were the real reason. What do you mean? Well, you know, Harry, I think you always like this sort of thing. Even the men you killed when you were sheriff. Didn't you envy them their free and easy ways? Oh, no, Harry, no. No, I would say that you've done a very bad job of your whole life. I don't think I like your conversation anymore, Victoria. A man can doctor a lot of conscience if he has enough money. That's not it. Time for harassment. I don't like her. <laughs> My little Rosa. She's our ticket to happiness. You like that, don't you? Hey. Hmm? Hello. Right. Seems to me they're leaving a pretty good trail. Uh, maybe a little too good. Yeah. Come on.
split up. At least that makes less to handle when we catch them. Yeah, but which bus do we follow? Wait a minute. I'm not doing it this way, but I got no other choice. There's a mining ghost town back up there in the hills. Let's go. Right out. Come on, boys. There's Mr. Bodine's horse and the paint. Mighty inviting. Why don't we just bust on down there and surprise him? I uh, think that's just what Harry wants, and we're not going to do it. You stay here and keep out of sight until we get something started. shall reap the whirlwind. Remember? I remember. I think we'll all remember. Well, well, look here. Now, this is quite a delegation. Something wrong? Sort of an unofficial welcoming committee, Sheriff. Maybe I can get arranged. Well, we'll talk to town council, see if it can be arranged. 
Victoria? Does the doctor know you're out? Well, not unless Billy here told him. Not me, sir. What are you doing in town? Oh, I get off the old homestead once in a while, haven't you heard? Take care, you hear? Yo! Boys, there is some woman. No, don't forget the boots now. Ah, yes. Now, how do I look, Maggie? Dandy. Play the music, love. I'm sick of it. Play the bleeding music, love. No, it's dumb. Johnson, and you say it's dumb. Oh, well, you don't like my music, so is that it? Well, I'll have to teach you 
you. I did it two or three. You don't like my music. Oh, here comes the tiger. <laughs> I could have shot you, mate. No need. Just help myself to a little water. Well, now, that water, it's going to cost you a dollar, you know. We've been having trouble with bandits up here lately, nasty brutes that they are. Have to protect ourselves, you know. You didn't steal these, did you? Bought them. You did? How much they cost? Who's your friend? Oh, him. Oh, that's uh, Hans, you know. He's dark here. Runs when anybody comes. How many citizens this town got? Well, there's five of us. There's Brown, he's the attorney at law, and there's Keita, and there's Maggie. Now, that's her. And there's myself. Used to be 3,000 here before the mine shut down. Of course, I wasn't here then, now. Brown was here then, and Keita was here then, but I wasn't. Oh, did you see this? Now, that was given to me by the Duchess of Albany. Sergeant Major, 15 Fusiliers. Well, that's real nice. Aye, that it is. Well, that's a dollar for the water. I'm afraid it's our only civic income. Well, that's uh, cheap enough. Much obliged. Thank you. Now, the hay's a quarter. It's a shilling a head. 
Which would make uh, six bob for the lot, or as you might say, two dollars. Well, that's reasonable, but I'm sorry I won't be staying. Well, you can't go without having a drink and meeting Maggie. Maggie, darling, come here. And we'll share a drop, just one gentleman to another. Maggie Delaney, the prettiest lady in all of Nevada. Nice to meet you, Maggie. Pleasure, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll share a drop to friendship the world over and to travelers met on a lonely road. Now, I won't take no for an answer. Come on. Well, maybe one drink might not uh, be that bad. Well, fine. Step inside. But uh, better take care of my horses. Well, your horses won't fly away. Good times and friendship do, but horses never do. Tito! Tito! It's a marvelous girl. She rode with Benita Juarez, you know. Tito! When you get the gentleman's horses stabled, come on inside and join us for a drink, darling. Do you like Irish whiskey? Oh, you bet. Well, I got a bottle. And man, wait till I show you my player piano. Hardly wait. Oh, we're just starved around here for new faces. Irish whiskey? Brewed from an Irishman's brass button, sour mash rye, and drifted through the finest hickory charcoal. Sure tastes like mezcal. Mezcal? Maggie, is this mezcal or the finest Irish whiskey? Mezcal. <laughs> well, then, you... Well, you caught me in a lie. A lie compounded of necessity and privation, mind you. <laughs> well, it's not bad, mezcal. Well, thank you. What do you all hang around a town like this for? man with your charm should uh, do well in a parasite's place. Well, now, that's very kind of you. But you see, out there, that's all mine. I'm what you might call a big frog in a dry puddle. <laughs> you see, in here, on this floor here, I matter. I, uh, I exist. I, I rule. Hey. All right, now, take it easy. You don't want to spill your guts out on that floor, do you? Anything you say. I got uh, $40 in my right front pocket. Maggie, darling, would you check out the gentleman's offer? And uh, you can lower that cannon, because I'm not about to get reckless over $40. Oh, is that right? Well, just what would it take to get you reckless? Well, uh, quite a bit. Oh, really? Well, I thought you might say that. Have you met Mr. Brown here? That man there with the big rifle. Elias Brown. He's not attorney at law, you know. $43. $43. Well, that's a good lump there. Now, at the end of that leather tongue you've got there, you wouldn't happen to have a watch, would you? Do you mind if I take a look at it? Oh, not at all. It uh, cost me $18, but it's not worth getting shot for. No, I guess not. But then tell me, what is? Well, at this minute, I, uh, I can't think of a thing. Well, you see this here? The scar I've got right here. You see that? It goes all the way down there. It was given to me by a bloody Gurkha. I didn't have to take his watch from him for that. Oh, really? I called him a pig. I told him to eat one. He took it as a religious insult. Oh, we've got no problem here. Uh, I got nothing against pigs. Yeah, well, we don't have no pigs here, you know. Oh. Well, uh, I want to thank you for the drink. Uh, and by the way, there's no hard feelings. I uh, suppose you people need the money more than I do. And so I'll just uh, go out and tend my horses and be on my way. Oh, well, we're going to shoot your horses. <laughs> don't worry, Chico. We don't kill anybody's horses. Put out your hands. What's the sense in those? You've already got my $40. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Now, you don't seem to understand. Those are handcuffs. Elias Brown is an officer of the 5th Nevada Judicial District. You're under arrest. Arrest for what? Prepare the prisoner for trial. 
whiskey like that. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I got the crown. This year, a term. Fifth District Court, Territory of Nevada, is now in session. The Honorable Judge Elias Brown presiding. All rise. <laughs> All right, get up, get up. <laughs> Members of the court, witnesses, prisoner at the bar. All rules and procedures of the Fifth District Court will be adhered to. Be seated. Clean the prisoner's face. <laughs> and instruct the bailiff that this kind of disorderly appearance will not be permitted. Are there any charges against the prisoner? Yes, Your Honor. What are the charges? Forcible rape, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> and who is stealing, Your Honor? I see. And, Your Honor, this here money was found in the person of the prisoner. Now, he took a man, he hit him over the head and robbed him, and left him for dead by the roadside. Are there any further charges? Yes, Your Honor. Murder. Murder! Oh, you poor fella, you, you didn't fall, did you? Now, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a brutal, savage misrepresentation of fact. Guilt by degree of the basest instinct of man. Now, this form of vermin here that has in itself the divine spark of God's rule and human decency and love of country and the highest calling of man, murder! Yeah! Order, order in the court! Order in the court! Sorry to bother you, but you've got a customer. You do have a room. Ten of them. Nobody's here except you. You mean you haven't seen anybody ride into town today with a string of horses? Nope. Not up to when I took a doze. Who are you looking for? My brother. He's supposed to meet me here. I haven't seen him. Take any room you want. Fifty cents. Keith Barkley. Is this your bill of sale? Yes. Nevada Merchants and Farmers Bank, bill of credit to Barkley Ranch. Is that your ranch? My family's. How many acres is it? 30,000. How much is it worth, all of it? Enough. There you are, Your Honor! A flagrant example of trying to bribe the court. I recommend that the defendant be fined $2,000 or hung. Order in the court. Remand the prisoner to the care of the bailiff while the court studies the disposition of the fiduciary motion. The fiduciary, the fiduciary, the fiduciary what? Order in the court, order in the court. Let's hang him. Bailiff will remove the prisoner. 
Fifth District Court, Territory of Nevada, is now in recess. All rise. Hurry, get up, get up, get up. Beautiful pearl stick pin. It was hidden in my shirt. You can have it if you want. Well, let me see it. Come here. <laughs> if you've got a pearl stick pin, you'd show it to me. You haven't got one. Yeah. Get the key and come inside. <laughs> Boy, do you think I'm dumb? <laughs> I must look like the dumbest girl since Fanny Applesauce. <laughs> All right. Look at that. Oh, throw it here. Uh-uh. Get the key. Come inside. What do you want me to come inside for? Well, I haven't had a woman to talk to in more than a month. I won't come in. But how'd you like this? Use that key. Use the key. <laughs> What's the matter, love? Is it the wrong key? Oh, no. Well, now, you didn't think that uh, we'd be hanging the right key up on a hook out here, did you? Oh. I'll kill you. You're a nasty shelly, you know. You'll kill me, will you? You do that. Well, just for that, you're not getting out. I'll tell you how to hang you. Well, are you going to kill me for $40? Well, no, we wouldn't kill you for $40 now. Would you like me to tell you why? I tell you. You see, they're all daft, all of them, you know. Brown he was a lawyer and a town judge. He made a quarter of a million dollars in the mine before they had to close down. He took all that money and put it back in to keep them going. Poor fella, you know. And Hans, well, Hans, he's, he worked for him, you know. He was uh, the bailiff. And the hangman. And Kitty, I told you about, she rode with Benita Juarez. But she had one battle too many. 
And Maggie, poor darling, she entertained the miners one after the other, and finally one day they found her running up and down the alley outside making noises like a bird. But you see, I'm really the only one who's not balmy. I'm a sergeant major, 15th Fusiliers, Her Majesty's Army. I trod the boards once, too, you know. But at present, I'm wanted for a small thing called desertion and murder. You know, there's not many places far enough away a man can go when he's wanted for murdering an officer of Her Majesty's Army. So what's the point of all this? Well, everybody's entitled to a full life, don't you think? And they enjoy it. I invent the games and they play it. Now, Brown, he's a judge. He's entitled to full honor and dignity. Hanch. Hanch has got kind of a religious turn to him, you know. Uh, Maggie, you now, she'll be playing a variety of parts, which I'm sure you'll see. And, uh, Keita, she keeps up her interest with the horses. But they're all mad, you know. Every last one of them. But I take care of them, and they take care of me. It's uh, kind of like, uh, it's like a business. There's very little profit in it, though, because, uh, well, because we haven't hung too many yet. <laughs> Senor, I want to talk to you. Will you talk to me? What about? I want to go away. Oh. Look, lady, your girlfriend's already played the key game. What's yours? Oh, no, senor. I want to go away from here. I will help you. Oh. Well, then. Uh... Go find the key and unlock the door. I can't. Conway has it. Well, what other game can we play? I'm not playing a game. I have to get away from here. I'm going to have a child. Please, senor. I have no place to go. Nobody. Who's the father? Conway? No, senor. A man who came here. He was killed. I can't raise my baby in this place. Please. If you're telling the truth, there's a sheriff at Dorado. Go tell him. I will go to prison. I know you don't believe me, but you have a family. You could help me. Can you get me a gun? I can't. Conway would kill me. All right. I have a brother meeting me at Dorado. His name is Jared Barkley. He's there now. Go tell him. He won't hurt you. Sign of my brother with those horses yet? Not yet. Let's see. Well, do you happen to know where a man can get a good cigar around here? Come on, I'll show you. I need a little fresh air. <clears throat> now, you can get a smoke over there at the saloon, but I recommend Don Gordon's store. Oh, well, I guess I can find that all right. Thank you very much. Senor, I am looking for a man. Senor, there is a man I have to find. Huh. This looks like Sam DeCoven's Pinto. Well, that's his brand. You and me are going down and talk to, uh... Welcome.
forget we're not going to hang you. We're doing what's called the governor's reprieve. At the last minute, we get a telegram from the governor, and in that telegram, it says that you're going to be pardoned. Don't forget that. Man. Blessed are the tents of the Lord, the flocks of the field, the beasts of the valley, the waters beneath the sky. No, no. I'll do anything to save him, anything. Anything? Yes, I'll submit to anything. He's the father of my children. What about your marriage vow? Oh. Redemption in his holy blood. Amen. Will the prisoner mount the scaffold? Prisoner will please mount the scaffold. The governor's reprieve. Get up there now. There he is, Your Honor. The prisoner's on a scaffold, just waiting to get his neck stretched. Is the hangman present? Here, Your Honor. A five-dollar fee for your hangman, and make the knot tight. Thank you, Your Honor. Let justice be served. You're quite right. It's time. Hangman, carry out the sentence. What about the re reprieve? What? Just a minute, now. Just a minute. It says here that there'll be no pardon from the governor. <laughs> you said it was a game! <laughs> Well, Your Honor, the reprieve did come through. It was just a bad case of misreading on my part. The man's not to be hung at all. His case will be taken under advisement by the Judicial Court of Appeals. Hangman, assist the bailiff in returning the prisoner to court. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah, I'll give a hand here myself. Ah, oh, you're a lucky man, mate, there. <laughs> Governor's pardon coming through like that. You, you could have been hung, you know. You know, I almost got hung myself once. The commanding general sent down my release at the last possible moment. Don't you ever let a thing like that happen to you. There you are, you... Dear fella. There you are. Almost as good as new. Come on, honey. You just come along with Maggie. You're all right now. before she goes lame. Oh, you were lame in the fiddler's pit, poor sweet. Animals that they are, and that would be just awful, wouldn't it? Well, well, now, where did you go? Don't. I'll throw you through the bleeding barn wall. Now, where did you go? For right. Where? Do I know? Is that why you want your little pig? You want to get that stupid pretty neck of yours stretched? They'll hang you and bury you, I tell you. Your only chance is here with me, do you understand that? With me, you miserable, worthless no. loony, you. Please don't. My baby, my baby. You're not having no baby. I told you five times. In two years you've been here, you're not having no baby. I am. You're not having I a baby. I am. I am. I am. Lie back there. You're gonna feel a whole lot better after you get some rest. <laughs> oh. Oh. That 
nasty rope. We'll have to get something to put on it. It'll help a lot. Doesn't that feel good, huh? You like that? Does that make it feel better, baby? Huh? You like that? Hmm? You like that? Judicial's appeal court could render a decision. We'll finish him in the morning. In the morning, the prisoner will have a sharper appetite of expectation, which will make his release from this life all the more poignant. Make sure everything is ready. Mr. Barclay. No, what is it? Are you going to feed the horse?
was his doing, not mine. I didn't want to. I'll finish up, Your Honor. We got a long ride ahead of us. Well, she, uh... She told me she was gonna have a baby. Was she? No. She always said that right after we killed someone. She felt so terrible. And the only thing that would help was to pretend she was going to have the poor man's child. She took a life, and now she was giving one back. That was crazy, wasn't it? Blessed are the tents of the Lord, the flocks of the field. Verily, verily, I say unto you, redemption, redemption in his holy name. Fifty dollars. Twenty-five to see you, twenty-five to raise. Call. My deal, I believe. Not yet. A lot of your IOUs here. They're all perfectly good, I assure you. That's just fine, Hewitt. In that case, you won't mind paying off before you play any more poker. I hope to win them all back. Save a lot of tiresome trips to the bank, you know. You've been hoping to win for the past two days, but your luck just ain't been up to your expectations. House limit on losers is $500. These vouchers here total up to 650 you owe. Now, you just pay up, and you can play all you like after that. It's, it's most embarrassing, Jessup. I don't carry that amount of money around with me. In that case, you're in real trouble, Hubert. No, I was about to say that I need some time to telegraph my bank for a letter of credit. Uh, just a day or so. You've got three hours. But, really, Jessup, this... I, I can't uh, arrange for the money so soon. Three hours. I'll try. you had in there. I was watching. Never saw a man lose with so many good hands. Oh. Well, luck runs hot and cold. When it's cold, nothing seems to help. <laughs> but it always can change for the better, can it? Oh, yes, certainly. As a matter of fact, it usually does. Uh -huh. I don't think we've met Mr... Uh... Jace Timmons. I own the freight line here in town. Uh, Edward Winfield Hewitt. Uh -huh. uh, Hewitt, if you don't mind my butting in, let me give you a little advice. Don't wait too long to pay Jessup. When it comes to money owed him, he's got less patience than a stuck bull. Best you pay up quick. But I have to wire San Francisco for the money. I don't know. 
That kind of thing is liable to take time, maybe more than three hours. I can't understand why he's in such a hurry. Might be he doesn't think there is any money in San Francisco. You do have the money, don't you? You don't suppose I'd dream of sitting down to a game of cards unless I had adequate funds. What do you think I am? Oh, I didn't mean anything by it. But to keep your playing cash in San Francisco... Well, as long as you can pay off, it's all right, I guess. Uh, if there should be some little difficulty in obtaining the money... Oh, well... People who tangle with Jessup wind up dead. Tell you what, Hewitt. If you have any trouble at all getting the money, you come see me. I might have a job for you. It'd pay $800. What sort of job pays all that money? Special job. Unless you definitely wanted it, I couldn't give you the details. You understand, it's pretty important. But if you did take it, I could get Jessup to let you off the string. Guarantee him payment when you complete the job. Are you interested, Hewitt? Well, uh, I'm not sure. That, uh, that fellow who followed me out of the saloon. Uh -huh. John Clay, Jessup's hired enforcer. I wouldn't push that deadline too close, Hewitt. Clay has been known to kill a man and bring his gold fillings back to Jessup to pay off a debt. Well, if you want the job, you can find me at my office or at the saloon. Thanks. Denver a little while. What's all this? For the Indian school? Uh-huh. They've been under quarantine for weeks. No one wants to go near them. And they need food, medicine, just about everything. Uh, measles. A simple little thing like measles. Can make a lot of trouble. Everything is already, Mrs. Barkley. You sure you don't want me to go along with you? Silas, you have more than enough to do around here besides who would look after Mr. Jared. Yes, ma'am. Now, wait a minute. You're not going alone. I always have. Look, why don't you let me get a continuation on the Taylor case? I'll go with you. There's no need for that. Well, then take a ranch, Ann. With spring branding going on? Jared, I don't need a bodyguard. I don't want one. I'm only going to the Indian village. Yes, I know, I but... know that country like I know my own name. If I take a few shortcuts, I'll be there by tomorrow afternoon. I'll send you a telegram when I arrive. Well, all right, but be careful, will you? Oh, don't worry. I've had the measles. Is it? Desk clerk, Mr. Hewitt. 
I made up your bill, Mr. Hewitt. I have no intention of leaving at the moment. Begging your pardon, Mr. Hewitt, but word is out around town that you owe Troy Jessup. Maybe you can't get the money. This bill is for $22. If you just pay up... I'll pay when I leave and not before. Mr. Hewitt, I don't want to have to ask the undertaker for this $22 out of your last possession. Get out! <laughs> I was on my way to the bank to see if the money had arrived. I didn't see you send a wire. It's conceivable you don't see everything. Maybe. You taking that money out in pennies? That is none of your business. Not yet. You got about an hour. Then I'll see you. Take the job. Well, there it is. All you have to do is to get it up to the Miwok village by nightfall Wednesday. But if it's so simple, why is it a special job? You're a freighter, one of your own drivers could do it. That's right. If it wasn't illegal to sell liquor to the Indians, my freight line is a legal business. Seems a great deal of risk for a very little profit. Not if they let us come in and mine their lands. There are traces of silver up there. It's worth the risk for that kind of payment. Why do you ask me to drive for you? Because the only man who would take this kind of job is somebody who needs it. And you need it. Over $600 worth. That's true enough. Those poor Indians, they have so little to begin with. To turn this over to them for a few hours of alcoholic joy to say nothing of a bad headache. Now look, you're in this now, Hewitt. I put Jessup off for four days. That'll give you time to get up there and make delivery and come back here. If you don't do it, you're dead. Now, what do you want it to be? Terribly generous of you to offer me an alternative when you know there isn't one. As I said earlier, I'll, I'll do the job. Have you ever driven a four up before? No, but I can handle it. All right. You leave in the morning. Uh, about the money. Your debt with Jessup will be paid when you deliver the cargo, and you'll get your money then, too. But I, I need some money now, my hotel bill. How much? Twelve dollars will do. if you would help me. I'm on my way to Stantonville and my wagon broke an axle. Are you going that far? Well, I'm going in that direction, yes. Well, I'm Victoria Barclay. Now, if I could just get there, I could hire another rig and send someone back for mine. So you're Mrs. Barclay of the Stockton Barclays? Yes, I am. Ah, well, I am going to Stantonville and I'd be happy to have your company. Oh, thank you. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to help me with all my boxes. Oh, by all means. <laughs> New team, they, they just don't seem to want to stand still. Well, sometimes it takes a while for them to know what you want of them. Yes, yes, I suppose so. Well, 
Why, what's all this? Oh, supplies for the Indian school. Well, I would have thought they'd got regular supplies from the outside. Oh, they do, when they're not under quarantine for measles. None of the freighters want to go up there. Measles? That's not dangerous. Oh, not for you or for me. But the Indians have never had it before. It's reached almost an epidemic, and some people are frightened of it. Maybe you didn't know it when you stopped. But you'll be helping a lot of sick children. I met your charge d'affaires some years ago at court. Gracious gentlemen and uh, connoisseur, he agreed with me that walking down the mall on a Sunday afternoon was one of life's greatest pleasures. My daughter felt the same way about it. She spent a lot of time in London when she went to Europe. Ah, that'd be young Audra, wouldn't it? Yes, how did you know? <laughs> Mrs. Barclay, I must confess to being a great admirer of your family. Your husband and yourself have built a position here out of nothing. It's something I want to do, have to do. I suppose I should have made my mark in this country years ago. But as the third son, I inherited no estate or title. But there was a considerable sum of money which I decided to invest in a cattle ranch in Wyoming. What happened? My present state is the result of that investment. I rather unwisely allowed agents to handle the arrangements whilst I lived the life of a gentleman rancher in London. After a while, I began to realize that the reports I was receiving were not only evasive and unsatisfactory, but also rather few. So I decided to take the last of my inheritance and come to Wyoming to see the ranch. And they had never heard of you. Quite correct. The property existed only on paper. <laughs> I imagine those two agents are living rather well off somewhere now. And here I am driving a freight wagon. Oh, I'm sorry. But perhaps this will be a new beginning for you. <laughs> get up. Oh. Let's get moving. Uh, Mr. Hewitt, when was the last time you rested the horses? They seem rather tired. Well, I thought I'd make it to Simpson's Wells before I stopped. Do you mean to tell me you haven't rested them since you started? No, I have a schedule to meet. I suggest you pull over there right now. You're right, of course. Sandwiches here. Would you care to join me? Oh, I'd be delighted. I'll see to the team first. I suppose it's obvious to you that this is the first time I've ever done this kind of work. Only a small cut, you'll be all right. What's wrong, Mrs. Barclay? You told me you were hauling farm tools for the My Walk Village. Now, since when do farm tools come in whiskey bottles? Who gave you permission to go snooping around? I was looking for water for you. How can you do this? Do you know what that poison cost them in more than money? Now, just a minute, Mrs. Barclay. I'm not selling them that liquor, I'm just the driver. That's what I'm paid for. That makes you just as guilty and just as dirty. Well, 
Man has to find some way of earning a living. A man has to have some honor, too. I think you'll find, Mrs. Barclay, that necessity often negates honor. And absolute necessity does away with ethics. Does a freight driver's pay mean that much to you? In this instance, yes. You object to what I'm doing, and I understand your point of view. But looking at it practically, you have no way to move your precious goods except with my illegal cargo. Necessity over honor, Mrs. Parkley. Mr. Heath, it's good to see you back. Good to be back, Silas. Where's Mr. Nick? Didn't he come along with you? Oh, he had some business to take care of. Well, he sure's going to miss a good dinner tonight. Well, I'd say that serves him about right, huh? Here, I'll tend your horse for you. All right, Silas, thank you. Well, it's about time you got back. Where's Nick? Well, he had some special business with the cattle buyer. What's so special about selling off a few yearlings? Well, it was a cattle buyer that interested Nick. Cattle buyer? Nick knows a lot of cattle buyers. Not one like T.A. Holcomb. T.A. Holcomb? What's so special about him? Well, in a few short words, tall, blonde, and beautiful. First lady cattle buyer I ever saw. T.A. Holcomb is a lady? Teresa Ann. Well, where's Nick now? Well, about as near as I can figure, halfway to Cheyenne. That's where she was heading. Where's Mother? Uh, the measles broke out over at the Indian school. It's almost epidemic. Dr. Cortina needed some supplies, so she took them over. Who went with her? Nobody. She went along. She say when she'd get there? Well, she should get there by tonight. She'll wire us when she arrives. Now, listen, you don't really think Nick would go to Cheyenne, do you? Jared, you haven't seen T.A. Hookham. <laughs> What are you going to do? About what? This. What do you expect me to do? As a lady of integrity and honor, I assume you'll march up to the local constabulary and turn me in. Good guess, good guess. Mrs. Barclay, won't you take into consideration the fact that I'm helping you accomplish your errand of mercy? And canceling it out with this cargo of whiskey. Can't you understand my position at all? No. You regard yourself as an angel of mercy, don't you? Helping the sick and the poor. And the righteous handmaiden of justice, too. Just turn me in and don't even try to understand that I'm only doing what I have to do. Reporting this to the marshal is what I have to do. I can't let you do that. Well, I was wondering when you were going to get around to that. Well, how are you going to do it? Shoot me? There's a good place for it over there. They wouldn't find my body for quite some time. That is, if you're brave enough to kill a woman. Mrs. Barclay, please, I had no such thought. But you must admit it'd be foolish of me to drop you at the door of the Stantonville jail so you can turn me in. No, you're getting off here. You'll be safe enough. And it's a long walk to Stantonville. I'll be long gone before you arrive. And your supplies are getting off here, too. Your horses I'll leave at the livery stable in town. Mrs. Barclay, I don't want to have to do this at gunpoint. Please get down. Fancy gambler, get off on time? Yep. He was all anxious to go. Didn't ask too many questions. <laughs> that man just hopped every which way we wanted him to. Uh -huh. Wasn't a bad shark. Couldn't play poker worth a nickel. He sure had class. Mm. Too bad. He'll probably be dead by nightfall. 
I hope somebody buries him decent. You. I seem to be having little difficulty. What happened? I'm not sure. I tried to pick up a little speed, but the team got away from me. I tried to stop them, but uh, one of the horses stumbled and the wagon slewed around. The details are a bit hazy, but uh, this is the result. You were. Uh, you never run into that kind of trouble, do you? I am willing to make a deal with you for some consideration in return. Such as? A ride to Stantonville for me and my supplies that you dropped off on the trail back there. On the same terms as before? Uh-huh. I'm afraid not, Mrs. Barclay. But I'll make you a counteroffer. I'll drop you close to Stantonville and you can walk in. That'll give me time to deliver the cargo. Deal? I'd make a deal with the devil himself if it will get those supplies to those children. You're on, Hewitt. It's all yours. See the wagon? Yep. Yeah. Down the same old road as always. Well, that old Timmons fella just never learns, do he? <laughs> you know, he's turning out to be our benefactor. <laughs> if I was a religious man, I'd offer up a prayer for his continued good health. <laughs> I tell you one thing, boy. That old driver he hired, you don't seem too smart neither. Boy, he acts like he'd never seen a team of horses before in his life. Shoot, he had him so fouled up there once, thought he was going to be there next Tuesday. <laughs> well, maybe you should have given him a hand. Might have saved some time. <laughs> well, I might have done just that. But uh, this woman started helping him. You say there was a woman with him? That's right. Picked her up on a trail. Her rig broke down. Real pretty woman, too. Anything that wears a skirt looks good to you. I think I got so close to her one time that I almost smelled a perfume. Which reminds me, Lloyd, when we're getting back to a town again. Just as soon as we take that shipment and sell it to the Paiutes across the line in Nevada. Well, now, how much money do you think we're going to make? More than enough to last for the next few months, anyway. <clears throat> hey, what you say we hit old Carson City again? Well, I like them old girls down there a lot. Sure you did. And what did they think of your big, ugly face? Now, Tajan, them girls treated me real nice. So you just better shut up. Any man with money in his pocket is a handsome man to them. That's right, Cajun. Nobody knows that any better than you do. Blanket under the seat if you're cold. I am quite comfortable, thank you. Take that road straight ahead. It's a shortcut. Where does it lead to? Oh, don't worry. It doesn't go anywhere near civilization. It's just a little old ghost town. Thanks. I hope that didn't strain your ethics too much. Worry about your own ethics. That is, if you have any left. 
Oh, I think one or two survive. Childhood training, you know. God and country, mother, women and children first. Mm -hmm. Well, you can drop the last two. This liquor of yours will hurt even them. I've told you before, it is not my liquor. I'm only the driver. And that makes you as innocent as a typhoid carrier. Did you feed the horses? Yes. If you're hungry, you'll want something hot. Well, it would turn out better, of course, if all the ingredients were fresh, but uh, this should be all right. Took me some time to realize that good food west of the Mississippi is as rare as the dodo bird. So I always carry a few things of my own. Interesting hobby, actually. I uh, can't exactly call this gourmet cooking. More like survival stew, I'll argue it. But it'll taste all right. Mrs. Barclay, circumstances have put me in the position where I have to deliver that wagon. Now then, if you hadn't known what the cargo was, would you still hate me? The point is, I do know, and what you're doing is wrong. Whereas you've never done anything wrong, I suppose. Oh such as condemning me without knowing why I'm doing it, such as not admitting that I'm helping you deliver your cargo. I'm not really a blackout, Mrs. Barclay. Look, we're both going in the same direction, and we need each other to get where we're going, and that is all we have in common. I consider that a great concession on your part. Well, don't. We may both have cargo on the same wagon, but mine is going to save lives. Yours will destroy them. You know, the difference between us is, whereas I know how to bend to necessity, you'd never even consider it. Ow! Are you all right? <laughs> is that an academic question, or do you really care? I don't like to see anybody hurt. Well, there's no major damage, just a little scorching. Here we are. I'm not hungry. You're a poor liar. You haven't had a thing to eat all day. I still have some sandwiches left. Which are now stale. Mrs. Barclay, would you please let me have my own way for once? Well, I'll say one thing, Mr. Hewitt. If you would confine your activities to cooking, you'd be a lot better off in this world. knew about that shipment? I don't know. Obviously, those thieves did. Well, what do we do now? There are two loose horses out there. You're not going out by yourself, Holland. Do you think you could help me catch them? I'll try. Let's go. some tracks. No, those weren't made by my horses. Those were made when the ground was wet. Some riders must have passed through here about a week ago. Now see, those over there. Now they're fresh, and they come in from the right direction. How did you learn to track? Oh, you learn a lot of things out here when you have to. Come on. There they are. I'm 
going to approach them from this side. Do you think you could go around in back of them and be ready to turn them back if they run away from me? Oh, I think so. Uh-huh. Easy, boy. Easy, Sandy. Oh, boy. Ooh. Mr. Hewitt, is there anything else you don't know how to do? I don't know. I, I seem to keep on discovering new ones. I think perhaps I better stay rooted to this spot. Oh, please. Please do. Easy, Sandy. All right, boy. Saddles. Found them in the livery stable. And where do you think you're going? I am going after my cargo, and you are going home. You mean it's still that important to you? My life's important to me, such as it is. Now, I'm not very good at things, Mrs. Barclay. Among my other faults, I don't play poker very well. I wound up owing far too much money to the wrong sort of people. Frankly, unless I deliver that cargo of liquor at the specified point tomorrow, They'll hunt me down and shoot me. Well, if you run now, how could they find you? Maybe they won't, but I'm not taking any chances with my life. I'm going to get that cargo back. And you're not coming with me. Mr. Hewitt, I am absolutely convinced you can't do this alone. Now, what stops your wagon stops my supplies from getting to those children. But you can get other supplies in Stantonville. Not the medicine. I'm going with you. Is that it? No. This is from Sacramento. Well, you sent our wire out over an hour ago. It should be in. Now, Jared, you know as well as I do, it's more than five miles from Stantonville out to the Indian School. Somebody had to ride out there with it and then ride back in with your answer, and that takes time. Well, somebody in Stantonville might have seen a drive in. Yeah, but your wire wasn't addressed to somebody in Stantonville. Wait a minute. Here it comes now. Well, what's it saying? Yeah. She never arrived at the school. Dr. Cortina checked Stantonville. Nobody there has seen her. We better take a ride out there. Let's go. Wrong time of the year for a storm. No little downpour is going to dampen my spirit. We got cause to celebrate. Well, now, might be some money in here. Medicine bottles. Well, we might be able to sell those someplace. What about the rest of the stuff? Don't waste nothing, do you, Lord? Huh? Look at that. How about that, huh? 
<laughs> Maybe you'll find a buyer for those, too, huh? Look at that. <laughs> oh, boy. Never mind those, Samuels. The liquor is what we're after. The wagon came this way, all right. Wish this storm would break and I'm done with it. No. No, the rain would wash the tracks away. We might never find that wagon again. Let's go. Come on, boy. Where are the horses? In those trees, I think. That's the only place they could have tethered them. I have an idea. It's tricky, and we'll only get one chance at it. But I think it's worth it. Come on. Better get back to camp and keep an eye on that wagon. Ain't nobody gonna bother that wagon. We gotta get them horses back. Would you shut up and you get back there? It's gonna take a while to get them horses. I don't want that wagon standing alone. Look, go on and get back here. Come on, Cajun. <laughs> and get away with it. Rob? Rob. Now that's a funny word for you to use. That might be, lady. But having is on it. And we ain't lost us a shipment yet. Well, now, wait a minute. We just might not have to go after him after all. He's got our cargo, but we got you. He'll be back. No. No, I don't think so. You see, my friend has a wide yellow streak down his back. And he wants that wagon even more than you do. Well, now. You mean he'd leave you here all by yourself? <laughs> I'm of no value to him. Pretty little lady like you. Smells so good. Now you see what you made me do? I thought you'd gone. So did I, but I couldn't leave without you or your medicines. The wagon's just down here. We can't go much further in this rain. You think we've lost them? Well, they haven't got a trail to follow. I guess not, but I hate this stuff now. If one of those horses stumbles or steps into a hole, we may be stopped here permanently. Uh, you're right, of course, as always. Whoa! I haven't thanked you for coming back for me. 
Oh, I suppose I'm not without a trace of morality. Mr. Hewitt, do you suppose if you contacted your family in England that you could maybe arrange for a small loan that you would repay? Well, in that way, you could start all over again. Pride is a wonderful thing to have, but it can blind you, too. I have no pride. Pride, no family, no money, none of the things we spoke of. I only wish I had. I only wish I was a real gentleman. Most I've ever been is a gentleman's gentleman, a valet, Mrs. Barclay, someone's servant. Oh, of course, the education was excellent, but uh, I was always someone else's man. Thought perhaps I, I might be able to stand on my own here in this country, but it seems I've been an outlandish failure. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. Well, I... Not been very successful in changing it so far, have I? Yes, I'll have to admit to that. But you could change by getting rid of this liquor. I'll be glad to oblige Mrs. Barclay, but you're asking too much. Mr. Hewitt. Mrs. Barclay, we've been through this. Don't see in me what doesn't exist. You came back for me, and that took courage. And a larger measure of cowardice. I didn't think I could make it without you. I'm... I'm sorry. So am I, Mr. Hewitt. How much further is it? Oh, two miles or so. It'll be the longest two miles ever traveled. Looks all right. How about oh, mine? Thank God. Strange. What? The water. Mr. Hewitt. Now, Mrs. Barkley, it won't taint you. It's the purest spring water I've ever tasted. Water? Nothing but water. Why? Well, that outlaw said that they had stolen other shipments. Yes, but if they'd stolen this one, they'd have got nothing but water. You know, Mrs. Barclay, I have an idea I've been taken for a fool. I was forced into accepting this job. I was made to take a specific route, probably one the outlaws knew already. So that the other cargo could go safely through on another route. Duped. No, worse than that, I think I can safely say I'm the complete pigeon. There is one thing. A cargo of water isn't illegal. 
No, but it isn't worth anything either. You know, I have a feeling I wasn't supposed to survive this trip. And if I'd gone back for the money, I probably wouldn't have survived that either. Not only am I a fool, but I'm a profitless fool into the bargain. I'll take you to the Indian village, if you like. Oh, I'd like that very much, Mr. Hewitt. There is one thing, however. If you don't mind, I'll drive. I don't mind at all. <laughs> the devil have you been? To the Indian village. And you'll be happy to know that the quarantine is almost lifted. Everything is fine now. What happened? We found your rig on the trail back there. Well, it's a long story. Oh, by the way, this is Mr. Hewitt. My sons, Jared and Heath. Gentlemen. I've invited Mr. Hewitt to be our guest at the ranch, and he's accepted. Provided he can cook dinner for us. Cook dinner? Oh, he's a genius at gourmet cooking. In fact, there may even be a future in it for him. You mentioned a long story. Yeah, uh, but first, gentlemen, there's one thing I think I ought to tell you about your mother which you may not know. She's a totally remarkable and absolutely magnificent woman. Uh, we knew that a long time ago. Well, I didn't. Not until recently. I shall do my best to prove myself worthy of your friendship. Well, you already have that, Mr. Hewitt. Ah, in that case, I shall go to work to win... Win? ...your regard, dear lady. <laughs> 